Hey everybody. I recently purchased a Water Snake T24 little electric trolling motor for my kayak here and unfortunately it is only a two speed and I've been spoiled by having infinitely variable speed trolling motors in the past and if you've ever used an infinite variable speed then it's really hard to go back to fixed speeds whether you've got the five speed or in this case it's a two speed and I won't go into a ton of detail, but if you're operating something with a speed coil or your standard 5-speed that does not have the pulse width modulation or the infinite variable speed control, then your motor is really, really, really inefficient and you're using full juice even when you're set to the very low setting. When you set your 5-speed to position number 1, you are still drawing 17 amps or whatever that motor draws you're drawing full amperage the rest of that juice is just being converted to heat by one of the speed coils and that's why you only go at a very slow pace most of that juice is being wasted because these speed coils are really really inefficient so the way to avoid that is by using a pulse width modulator and what that does is it sends a signal to the motor and it pulses the signal very rapidly and so you've got these on off cycles and so when you've got it set at a very low speed your off cycles a lot longer than your on cycle and so you're actually using very little battery when you're moving along at a very slow speed and the faster you turn it up the more battery you're using so you can really really extend your battery life by using a pulse width modulator not to mention you get the benefit of having infinite variable so I'm going to show you how I did it it was about twenty dollars and you can do this for any trolling motor that does not already have infinite variable speeds on it if it's got either two speed or uh, five or three speed whatever so this is the little unit you're gonna get I'll put a link down below to it these wires do not come with it these white ones do now this little box right here is my little switch box that I made myself uh, this comes just loose with the wire and you've got your switch and then you've got your dial switch here so this is your speed control you can turn from zero and this has an on off and it clicks on and then you can go all the way up to full speed or anywhere in between and then again you've got your on off switch right there you've also got an on off switch right here and it's also a three-way toggle you can go on off or reverse so that's pretty cool. You can actually switch to reverse right here on this switch. So the way this works is like any switch would work. If you've ever hooked up a switch to a DC system, you'll have your positive and your negative that come in from your power source, your battery, and then you'll have your positive and your negative that will go out to your motor. And it's as simple as that. If you were wiring this directly, you'd have, again, positive and negative will come in from your battery. Another positive and negative would go out to your motor. I've got it set up with these little quick connects on it so I can pull this whole unit right out of my kayak and take it inside with me at night and it doesn't get rained on or anything else. This is something else I purchased. This is a little battery meter and it tells me how much juice I have left in my battery. And that was simply, again, a little hot or positive and negative and I screwed them right into the same terminals where the battery is. So when I plug this in and it's plugged into the battery, this lights up for me and tells me how much battery I have left. So the way I've done this is pretty simple. It might look a little complicated with my wires going everywhere, but it's really simple. I've got my battery back here, and then I've got my quick disconnects for my battery. So I unhook these, and I can just take the battery out and put it in the shed and put it on the charger, and these wires basically just live in the kayak. They're wired in. Likewise with this. This is... I'll show you this in a second here. Hang on. My motor comes with alligator clamps. Now these would normally clamp right to your battery and then you'd operate your motor from the switches that come with it. So what I do is I use this and I just hook it 
to that like so so now this is basically a continuation of my motor you know I've got my red and my black from my motor and then these are my red and my black from my battery they go down through there up underneath and come out right here so not really hard to figure out this unit I have mounted if you see this cord right here this is a piece of shock cord and I just have it tied into a loop and I basically do that I stretch that loop out I slide this into it and that pulls it up and it actually sits right inside this little groove keeps it completely out of my way my little battery comes I mean my little switch box comes out and sticks right on that velcro and then all I got to do is plug these wires together so I'm not going to actually show you the process of doing that I can't do it one-handed but let me put you on pause for half a second and once it's together because it only takes a second I'll show it to you in action okay so now if you'll notice I have these two sets of connectors are different these two are both the same connector here this one has a black connector it's not a different kind of connector necessarily it just lets me know these two are one and these two are another I've got them separated so that they can't get confused so one goes to the motor. I don't even know which one's which honestly uh, one goes to the motor one goes to the battery I've got some velcro wrapped around there I've got some velcro tucked up under here and in theory that should get all of that up out of the way now this battery is telling me I've only got 28% battery left and I don't believe that because it should be a full charge on it but it has been sitting out for quite a while now so I don't know so there you go that's pretty much tucked up out of my way as much as possible there's my battery meter Here's my on off switch. This turns my speed up and down. And then we'll go over here and we'll have a little quick demonstration. So the idea now is we keep this turned on. See, this has the same way. This has an on off forward or reverse toggle switch. So we put it into the on and forward position and then we set it to high and as long as everything is hooked up properly it should when we turn this little knob right here and flip it to the forward position we should I can do any speed I want all the way And then we can just flip the little toggle switch, flip it the other way, and now we've got reverse. And it's likewise full infinite variable. And that is all controlled right there while I'm sitting in my seat it's basically just reach forward and my controls and everything are right there so when I'm fishing if I get a fish I can just flip it back into reverse I can slow the speed do whatever I need to do and it's all good because when you're in this you can see where it's positioned I mean just the nature of any outboard motor is going to sort of be behind you and this one even when it's lowered down here it's behind you and off to the side it's right in your blind spot it's really sort of awkward place to get to so if you have to make any kind of adjustments to flipping it to forward or reverse or you want to change high or low speed you really kind of have to twist and turn and it's just kind of awkward to do that so in addition to having the infinite variable you've got a dashboard control now and you can just reach forward and flip the switch on you can turn it off you can flip it to reverse you can monitor your battery you can do all of that the unit itself cost me 18 or 19 dollars i believe 
that came with the switch and the switch of course this is just a little tupperware whatever i don't even know name no name brand thing i got at the grocery store it was like a four pack for a dollar um this i'm not sure how much this cost me but this was five or six dollars eight dollars something like that i'll put a link to that down below that's not necessary but it's nice to have you'll know how much battery juice you've got left and then of course you've got to buy wires so i will say on a few points of caution now that we've gone over how to do it you've got to get proper gauged wires these are dc motors and they draw a lot of amperage so this particular motor on high draws 17 amps and if you're using uh, say a 30 pound thrust Ozark trail or something I don't know how many amps they draw if they draw more than 17 you'll need to look into that and make sure you're using the proper gauge wire 12 gauge wire will work for a 17 amp motor provided you don't do more than a five foot run so I would recommend at least 12 gauge wire or possibly 10 gauge wire but for my purposes 10 gauge wire was overkill even at the 12 gauge it barely gets warm uh, while I'm using it so the 12 gauge wire is good the other thing I will point out is if you don't want to use the pulse width modulator that I'm gonna put a link to down below you want to get a different one or a different model or something like that make sure you buy one that has a frequency of 25 kilohertz or 25,000 hertz I got another one of these units that works just fine but what it does is as it sends that pulse to the motor on off on off on off it does that at a certain frequency it won't affect the way the motor runs it'll be just as smooth as can be but if it's pulsing within a frequency that we can hear you know it's in that that Hertz range that falls within that hum human hearing then we're going to hear that humming noise and the one i bought was 200 hertz and it just made this horrible horrible humming noise it worked fine and if you don't mind that really loud humming go ahead and get one 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz is the upper end of human hearing so make sure if you don't buy the unit i'm going to put the link down below you buy a different unit make sure you get one that is 25 kilohertz or 25,000 hertz and then it won't make any noise at all the only noise you'll hear will be the humming of the motor or whatever you get from this you won't hear that hum coming out of the unit itself which is really really annoying so keep that in mind use the proper gauge wire that includes your connectors don't get connectors for 16 gauge wire and then try to put 12 gauge wire through it. Get the proper connectors, proper gauge wire, 25 kilohertz frequency on your pulse width modulator, and it's you're good to go. Any trolling motor out there can be turned into an infinite variable speed trolling motor by using one of those. And if you include the cost of the wire and everything, you might be looking at about $30. So I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss anything. You never know what it's going to be with me. Thanks again. I'll see you real soon in the next one.